What up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt Wyatt. So I'm going to review another film that came out recently, and it's called Speak No Evil. It's a, a remake to the 2022's Danish horror film. And yeah, this is something that doesn't always happen a lot when they remake movies. They usually take years to process and try to add some of the rights issue here and there. But I didn't expect them to remake a movie so quickly, so soon, a couple of years later. You got a great cast with James McAvoy, uh, Scott McNary, and Mackenzie Davis in the film, which it was a great casting choice. So basically, this is about these uh, two American couple who's going off on the vacation, living off in London, until they meet up with a British couple and, a, and their son, and they both bonded and they have a good lunch until they decided to get invited off into the country out in the middle of nowhere and invite them on their hospitality and spend the time together until they turn their hospitality into a living nightmare. So I didn't know what the hell to expect going into Speak No Evil. I have not seen the original film, the Danish version of the film, so I can't compare the two of them. So I went in with a mind, with an open mind, with not knowing anything, even though that they played the same trailer in front of every movie I went to go see, because they really want to get people into the theater. And you have James McAvoy as a sadistic psychopath who does come off of a bit of more charismatic and more uh, of persuasive when he's trying to sucker these couple into two spending time with them through the whole the weekend out, out in the middle of nowhere and he does come off a very tiny sadistic and red flags and in our mind as an audience we're like what the hell are they doing why are they sticking around with them when they're showing many red flags and you're going off and spending a, a couple of strangers that you only knew for one night when you had a lunch together and and also Mackenzie davis is also fantastic in the film and and you see Scott McNary, who's playing the husband, Mackenzie Davis's husband. They both worked together on a show on AMC hit that it was Holt and Catch Fire. So I thought that that was a, a great reunion between the two of them, that they're reunited again. And yeah, I will say that after coming out of the theater, I will say that I really liked it. I had a good time watching it. Not, And I'm not going to say that this is a perfect movie and it's not going to be made for everyone. But I think that, that the whole concept is to learn about these decisions that, that these couples are making because they are a bunch of pushovers. They don't want to deal with confrontation. They don't want to be rude in front of these strangers that they hardly know. They want to show their politeness. And, and, they, and these British couple who are so messed up in the head and they took a, take advantage of the, of the situation to manipulate them and seduce them to get them to stay, even though they force it upon them without trying to force it upon them to stay with them. And once we get into the third act and we start to understand what their intentions are, it really is so messed up in so many ways. Their, their son who we think they are their kid, he has no tongue. It looked like his tongue has been cut out and he's a, and he's been trying to tell them, including the daughter, that, of what's really going on. But he can't because he, he has inability to speak because he his tongue was cut out. And we start to see some of the dirty, dark secrets that they keep in, in their closet. And it really takes a whole turn. Here's the thing that really frustrates me, but I get that that's the whole point of the story. But the situation that they had many times to get away from these two fucked up couples and, and, and there's so many opportunities that they could have taken and they don't. And there's a, there's some stupid odd reasons of why they, they would choose to go back to them in the first place, even though that they're showing something, a lot of red flags and that the behavior was so weird and bizarre and it was questionable of how they treat their kid. It, it's just so messed up in the head and that you're thinking what the fuck are they thinking? Why are you stay, stay, sticking around with them when you know you have a chance to leave? But they don't want to be rude. They they don't want to deal with confrontation, especially Scott McNary, the husband in the film, which he was the weakest character out of all of them, who refuses to stand up for himself, especially standing up for his wife whenever he whenever she gets uh, uh, insulted or even the kid, or even his own daughter. I mean, like, I don't want to give away too much without spoiling the plot point, but I will say that he d is coming off of more of the weak link that he doesn't show a backbone, which I did not like about it, about this movie. But I get it that that's tensional and it's made for the story purposes, and I get that. But the best part of the movie is James McAvoy's performance, playing a charismatic but a but a, t a sadistic psychopath. This is the, the second time he's played a character like this since Split. And this dude is in the best shape he's ever had in his career. And he's in his mid-40s. That dude is fucking bulked up in this movie. He did it so well.
he really brought it all in that performance. And Mackenzie Davis is a scene stealer too. They, those two of them are both the MVPs and the suspense. There's been so many suspense in the movie that just keeps throwing at us of what these couple are going to do to the American couple. You don't know what they're going to do. Just when you think that they're, they're going to do one thing and it pulls a 180, they are constantly kept throwing it at us with the suspense and keeping us guessing what the hell they're going to do to them. If they try to leave the, their place, oh man, the third act finale does deliver and it, and everybody in the audience was cheering for that moment and it was a fun finale to watch and I, I was fine with how they wrapped up the, the film, but overall, it's still a good time in the theater that you want to watch a crazy suspense thriller in the theater with an audience and it's going to make you feel uncomfortable to watch at times but at the same time you'll be cheering by the end of the movie without giving away too much but i'm not going to tell you how this all plays out at the end of the film but yeah the james mcavoy really carried the film especially mackenzie davis i just wish that scott mcnary's character who's playing mackenzie davis husband had a little bit more moment in the film and i did not like how they've handled them and how they use them because these two couple are going through a rough patch of their marriage and they think that that spending time with these two strangers out in the middle of nowhere will be best thing for the both of them including their daughter which to me in my mind no, it's not the smart decision to make when you're meeting up with a stranger that you barely know and that they're showing a bunch of right flags, but yet you still go there anyway. And, and I, I was because us as audience were like, what the hell are you doing? Do you not have common sense? But I get it that we they wanted to do this for the story purposes and it helps us learn something for those of them, for those of the people that don't know. But overall, it was a decent movie that I had a good time. Not perfect. It's not going to be one of my favorite movies of the year, but it's definitely a rewatchability in a good time watching it during the spooky season. The body count was very intense. It did get a little bit graphic at times. So my final verdict for Speak No Evil, I'm going to give this movie an 8 out of 10. The cinematography, I will say, was definitely amazing. The scouting location was absolutely great. And yeah, that's about it. So thank you so much for watching my video. Let me know what you thought about Speak No Evil. For those of you who have went out to go see it, what did you think of it? Did you enjoy it more than I did? Or, or are you someone out there that thought it wasn't made for you? And if you've seen the original film, did you prefer the remake or do you prefer the original? Because I can't say, because I have not seen the original Speak No Evil, so I can't compare the two of them. I will eventually check out the original Danish Speak No Evil version. Sometimes it's very rare for movies like this when you make uh, do a remake. It doesn't always live up to the hype, and most people would say that they're it, that the, the original was better than the remake. But there are a lot of remakes out there that did surpass the original from old films back in like 20 years ago. But yeah, it's a definitely a really good remake. There are most people out there that did prefer the remake over the original. And hey, I can't say because I didn't see the original. I mean, so thank you so much for watching my video. Make sure you leave it a thumbs up on my video and make sure you hit that subscribe button and help me reach 500 subscribers. And if you want to follow my social media links, the link tree will be down in the description down below. I hope you guys have a great day, great evening, wherever you're from and stay tuned for more of my content.